So now we move to arches. Now, post and lintel is ultimately limited in width because you have to deal with the tinsel strength of the lintel itself. Whereas an arch can cover a much larger span. The reason is we're putting everything under compression, so there's no concern with tinsel strength. And I clicked the wrong button. There we go. So instead of pulling straight down, uh, where we would have a tinsel strength problem, all the forces from the wall are being pushed down the arch. So each of these stones must therefore be under compression, which while we don't have an infinite amount of compression, we there are limits to the arch, it's much, much broader than what we have from post and lintel. So let's talk about the various arch forms. You can have anything from pointed to semicircular to corbelled arches. They're fairly straightforward and oftentimes will be altered for structural as well as decorative reasons. And we're going to look at a few specifically. Now, when we start moving the support for the arch outside, we create a buttress. So here we have Romanesque and Gothic churches. And what they will frequently do is we'll have a vault. So here's our arch at the top. And in order to get that weight to the ground, it needs to go through a buttress because if it ended at the wall here, that weight is not going to transition well to a vertical axis. It's not going to, to turn down really well. It wants to go straight. So that's where buttresses come in. They're always on the exterior of the building, pushing back against an arch or a vault. And here we have another example with that arch for the ceiling. So we see these oftentimes during the Gothic. We also have arcades, which have nothing to do with awesome video games. Instead, we have arcades like this. So what we're doing with a vault, the only difference between an arch and a vault is imagine that I take an arch and simply stretch it as far as it can go into the horizon, almost like stretching a slinky and we get a vault. And we see these with arcades quite commonly in Europe. These are basically covered walkways where one side has been opened. Another way that we tend to see it is we see groin vaults. Now, the most basic form of vault is, of course, the barrel vault. That's where I've taken my basic arch and stretched it. A groin vault takes two barrel vaults and puts them at 90 degrees or perpendicular to one another, which opens up the sides. It uses less material, and the support system takes up less space. So effectively, we've opened up these two walls on either side. One step from that is going to be a rib vault, where instead of the groin vault covering basically the entire surface with support structure, so anytime I remove anything from this groin vault, it will collapse. With a rib vault, we cut it down to its most basic structure. So you see we've basically got a dome in the middle surrounded by a series of arches. If I take out any of the fill in the middle, nothing will happen. If I take out one of the ribs, that's where we would end up with a collapse. So it's a stronger support that uses less resources and again takes up less space because it's lighter. So the columns can be even smaller at its corners. Now, if I take an arch and spin it, we get a dome. And this is great for high open places like athletic fields in Alaska. This whole thing is basically one big dome. Now, in the ancient world, of course, they're not covering major sporting events with domes, but they do something else. Oftentimes, they will use these for temples and churches. The reason is, again, just like a sporting event, we're trying to put as many people into one place as we can. And consequently, I don't want columns holding up the ceiling. So here we have the Pantheon. This is an ancient Rome built around 125 CE. And it's one of the largest and oldest domes in the Western world. The whole thing is concrete and has survived for over 2,000 years. So it's really a remarkable place. Based on the Pantheon, we see other domes built during the Renaissance. 
And all of these architects will go to Rome and study the Pantheon before creating their own, such as the Duomo in Florence, Italy, where they use a similar system, putting everything under compression and then putting that lantern at the top to, again, put a lot of weight through the system and make sure that we're not dealing with any tinsel strength. We're only dealing with compression. And then you have St. Paul's London, same basic idea, except here they use three separate domes, an outer dome for the weather, an inner dome for structure, and the innermost dome, which is primarily decorative.